Jochen kommt. If we could come in tighter, please. Act like y'all like each other. Come on. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Today is another great day in Fulton County, another great day of crime fighting. Um, we are here today to just let the public know that we are continuing our mission to target gangs as we believe it is our number one public safety deterrent crisis that we're in. Um, I have to acknowledge the two men that are before me before I even start. This is um, the great Detective Needham and the great Detective Davidson from Sandy Springs Police Department. Um, this was a collaboration, but you always have to acknowledge those that are on the front line working really hard to get things done. And these two gentlemen have done just an excellent job. What today's indictment is about is the Drug Rich Gang, which is a hybrid gang, and it started back in 2016. That's how far we can document this gang existing. Um, we know that it is a gang that primarily actually exists out of DeKalb County, um, the Stone Mountain and the Tucker area. Um, but as we know, crime and criminals have no boundaries and they found their way into my county, Fulton County. Um, I have a message today that you will hear repeated time and time again. If you thought Fulton was a good county to bring your crime to, to bring your violence to, um, you are wrong and you are going to suffer consequences. And today is the start of some of those consequences. Um, this gang, as I mentioned, is a hybrid gang. It does include members of the Gangster Disciples, the Crips and the Bloods. We know that here in Atlanta, Georgia, that hybrid gangs are something that we regularly see. Um, we know that this gang does have some identifiers that connects it together. Um, they use things like prescription bottles and money symbols, and this is in their jewelry and their tattoos, and we see that present here. We have identifiers identifying this gang. But that's not the problem, that people collected together or they decided to use symbols. It's what they did once they joined together. What this indictment represents is 16 different victims in our county, 16 different incidents of violence, and 26 defendants. They committed crime everywhere from the south to the north of my county, which included Union City, Atlanta, and Sandy Springs. The earliest car crime committed that is captured in this indictment is a 2018 carjacking. Um, the latest was committed just this month. We are aware that crimes have occurred in other jurisdictions, but what this indictment primarily covers are the 16 crimes that committed here in Fulton County. Um, the victims, they do not discriminate, but what they did do is target people who show their wealth on social media. Um, so I do have a message for the public where it is kind of fun to put your things on social media and show off. Unfortunately, these gangs are becoming more savvy more sophisticated in the way that they target you. And this is a way that we know that they targeted these individuals. And it's because of these great detectives work where they were able to show that they were following these individuals and using it to their advantage. Some of the celebrity victims included Calvin Ridley, who is a loved member of our Falcons, Brad Guzan, who is a loved member of the Atlanta United team, Marlo Hampton, who is on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Brittany Mealy, who is the mother of Future's child. All very well-known celebrities that who have decided to take residence right here in Metro Atlanta, because this is a great place to live, and we cannot tolerate this. But don't be fooled. This indictment also covers other individuals who are not as famous, but also had their wealth on social media. Um, lots of social media influencers. The incidences that are in here is, thank God we don't have a murder, but we have a uh, kidnapping. We have armed robberies, we have shootings, and we have home invasions, very violent crimes, things that cannot be allowed in our county, and all done again at the hands of crime, at the hands of gangs. What I want the public to see today is today is a collaboration of law enforcement, because as they have gotten more savvy, so have we. 
And so what you have is a collaboration of the Atlanta Police Department, the Union City Police Department, the United States Attorney's Office is here today, the Fulton County Sheriff, the Marshals, and the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. We are working together. We are working collaboratively. And we have a message. And that is get out of this county or expect to start seeing sentences that go life plus because I am not going to negotiate with gang members. I am not going to allow pleas. We are going to find you. We are going to convince you. And we're going to send you to the prison for the rest of your days. And I'm not apologizing for that. Any questions? As it happens, I live in the part of DeKalb County that drug risk is covered. I live in my life. Um, and you mentioned a uh, uh, drug rich hat uh, who's uh, st stinny in the, in the indictment, um, who, as I understand it, just got out of jail or prison. He's living with his mom on street. Um, how much cooperation? Because I, I can't help but notice that DeKalb County isn't standing behind you right now. Like, but I know that they're accused of crimes in DeKalb County. Like, is there collaboration happening between Fulton and DeKalb County with regard to the investigation of this gang? Um, I have a relationship with the district attorney in DeKalb. I cannot say we specifically collaborated on this incident. I will say that we know that this gang has also committed crimes in Cobb, in Fayette, um, in a lot of the surrounding jurisdictions, and they have been at the table as we have developed these crimes. In fact, I'm aware that the Gwinnett district attorney does have an indictment against some of these same members, and she has sent part of her staff to be at the table. Uh, talk about how this came down. You talked about you know, the, the detectives kind of bringing this forward. What was the beginning of this? How did this, you know, all these things have been happening, but how did you all put it together and what was kind of the germ, the beginning part of this investigation? Um, I have to give credit to the Sandy Springs Police Department. Um, they were able to really pay attention, to really go back and track and see that these people were tracking people on social media. Um, obviously, it doesn't happen at the first crime where you realize that there is a trend, but they pretty quickly did that. I have a great relationship with the chief in Sandy Springs, uh, Kenneth DeSimone. We began talking. I began sending assistant district attorneys out there as we developed this, and they are, were really the foundation and the work. But as always, you know that I, I love our acting chief in Atlanta, Sheerbaum. He was automatically willing to get involved and to do their part and to develop this. And so people just came together and developed this. But the foundation and the start, as you asked, was really through just great detective work. Mm -hmm. And when, what years was this? This was in the, the past year, isn't it? The, the Sandy Springs thing? Yes, but we do have crimes going back in this indictment to 2018, because once that research was done, we saw that there were crimes going back to 2018. We also have this gang documented going as far back as 2016. As George Cheedy just pointed out, this is a gang that primarily operates in DeKalb. And so I can honestly tell you, when they first brought this to me, I said, this is not one that I'm familiar with. We don't hear about them a lot. And then we began to realize that's because most of the work they had put in, um, and I use work in the slang term, most of the crime that they were doing was out of DeKalb County, um, but they decided to cross the county lines, and that's going to be detrimental to them. So the, the indictment mentions lyrics from a couple of videos. It does. And we're going through the lyrics. Kenny Johnson, Congressman, has proposed legislation to limit the use of rap lyrics in prosecutions. Do you have a thoughts about that? I think that uh, I would welcome an opportunity to sit down with Hank Aaron uh, and discuss uh, that proposed l legislation. Um, I, I don't think that it will be successful. I think if you decide to admit your crimes over a beat, I'm going to use it. And you've used that before uh, with previous uh, gang member arrests. Um, what are your, um, your specific responses to the criticism? that uh, you're specifically targeting Atlanta's hip-hop community through these lyrics? I'm not targeting anyone, but however, you do not get to uh, commit crimes in my county and then decide to brag on it, which you do that for a form of intimidation and to further the gang and not be held responsible. One of the lyrics in, used in this 
indictment. Just one of the lyrics is, me and my crew striking out, striking in all black. Send me the drop. We'll kick in the house. If we steal a car, we're going to take off the tag. Well, they're kicking indoors, committing home invasions, uh, and now I'm using those lyrics that they're admitting to doing that. I'm going to continue to do that. People can continue to be angry about it. Um, I have some legal advice. Don't confess to crimes on rap lyrics if you do not want them used, or at least get out of my county. It sounds like when it comes to the investigation, um, not that the days of people being followed home from a, a restaurant or something like that aren't still happening, but it sounds like it's as simple as somebody posts, hey, I got this new chain, I got this new car, and these guys are just sitting back. Scroll Can you kind of just take us through that process? I have a very good example of that. Um, Marlo Hampton is a star on Atlanta Housewives. Um, that's a show. It's Atlanta, so I like it and I watch it, and I'm, I'm a fan of hers. Uh, one of the things she does, though, is at one point she has the news media in her home, and during that interview she shows you how to enter the house, um, where things are within her closet. Um, she then becomes a victim. That's not wise to do. Um, you should be able to show you've worked hard, you have some success, people are interested in you. You should be able to show that. But it, it's not a wise thing to do because you're exactly right. Now what they're doing is they're looking on social media and they are seeing, is, are there things here that we would like to get? One of the things the investigators realized is they're immediately going to closets. They're immediately going to bedrooms. They know where these high-end items are and they are seeking to get them. And so it's just not wise to do and you're right, they have become more sophisticated. Um, but luckily they give us good evidence because we're able to track them as they are tracking other individuals. But my message to the public is, please stop doing that. Are, are most of these home invasions or are they burglaries and they don't care if they're home? Or they gotta, there's obviously a big difference between burglary and home invasion. Uh, they're actually both. Uh, sometimes the victim, like Mariah Carey, was not home at the time, right? So it becomes a burglary. In other times, unfortunately, the victims are home and they don't mind using violence once they enter the home and you're present. So sometimes they are just burglary, sometimes they are home invasions. Either way, people's dwellings, their homes, where you feel safe, is violated and things are taken. But unfortunately, in some occasions, people are targeted and really harmed. In one of these cases, we had a 16-year-old child in the shower and she was taken downstairs by force. You know, an incident as a mom, I cannot imagine having to have gone through and suffered. Yes, sir. We have the YSL RICO indictment already this year. Now we have this RICO indictment today that you're presenting today. Would you say that's how you plan to target gangs here in Fulton County, using that RICO uh, statute and keep doing more and more indictments like that? Um, where appropriate, that's what I'll use. Uh, real quick, uh, one, one more question. Um, to, you brought up YSL. Um, just, there's been a lot of developments recently in that. I'm hoping you could address um, the witness intimidation, where, where we kind of stand with this. And also, I've just had some conversations you know, with former and current detectives who believe that this is going to cause some type of chilling effect when you're going to start seeing discovery leaked on Instagram, uh, people aren't going to be uh, you know, cooperating anymore with the investigation. So I just, I guess, first off, where are we with Young Thug's case, and then if you have any reaction to, to that chilling effect? Um, I agree with detectives. If this information is listed on social media, it will have chilling effects. Uh, we are taking precautions to make sure that that does not happen, um, that people are protected when they cooperate with the law enforcement and the police, because Citizens cooperating is a big part of ridding this from our community. It is the largest part. This is a, I ask you, yeah, off topic for a moment, um, your reaction to Judge McBurney's order this morning that is compelling the governor to testify, but then delaying the, the test, testifying until after the election. I think it's appropriate for witnesses that have information in that investigation to testify. Today we, we are seeing the sentencing in the, the murder case for Kennedy Maxey, another seven-year-old was shot over the weekend. How can you ensure parents, the public, that kids are safe in the city of Atlanta and the Fulton County? Um, both of those cases are the same in that they take away our most pre precious commodity, our children. Um, and today, that defendant, uh, the world should know, got life without the possibility of parole plus another 15 years. So that and that gentleman was a member of a gang, and that's an example of gang violence that we cannot allow in our community. There is a distinction in this case that happened over the weekend, although it is equally tragic. It is an incident of domestic violence, something that we know is really just um, 
People don't seem to be able to get along in relationships. And we have too many guns in the wrong hands and too much freedom to get guns. Um, but this is a harsh reality. If you are in a domestic situation and there is a gun present, you and everyone around you is in more danger. And it is very difficult for the law enforcement to be anything but a reactor to that. We have got to have legislation that does not allow domestic violence abusers to have guns around them. And I think we have to have some serious conversations about something that's not popular. Everybody doesn't need a gun. Um, I have come to the public many, many times and said, stop leaving your guns in your cars because they are breaking into cars, taking your guns, and using them from the wrong things. And we are suffering as a community this morning. It broke my heart to watch. Here I get a huge success last week, Kennedy Maxey's killer held responsible. And this morning I wake up to another precious life stolen. I'm sorry. The, you said that the, the shooting of the child, there was a gang involved with it. Which I know you're aware of that. That gentleman had gang ties to Virginia on down. Um, he was here. They say I'm picking on the rap community. He was here to be an aspiring rapper. Uh, District Attorney, back to the special grand jury. You gave us some guidance back in the summer about how long this will go. What do you believe now in terms of how much longer you expect the grand jury? It isn't panel until May, but what is your expectation of uh, how many more you know, subpoenas you'll send out, how many more people you expect to come in before this wraps up? I think we're about 60% through of all of the people that we need to be brought up. I'm pleased with the pace that we're going. Um, you know, there can't be any predictions, as you know. Many people are uh, unsuccessfully fighting our subpoenas. Uh, we will continue to fight to make sure that the grand jury and the public gets the truth. Um, and I am very hopeful that by the end of this year, I'll be able to send the grand jury on their way. Of the 26 people in this indictment, how many are in custody? Oh, it's, I didn't. I had that exact number. I think it's about 18 of them are in custody right now. I know we have five that are in the wind. Okay. And are the 18 in Fulton or Elton? Various places. Uh, yes. Was there ever a moment in the Trump investigation where you anticipated that the special grand jury might complete its task before the election and would have approved the idea of issuing the advisory report beforehand, or did you always kind of know? No, I knew we were going to wait till after. I've been very specific and um, determined to uh, get rid of that accusation that this is just some political stunt and we were trying to uh, impact the election. As you may recall, I did not call the first witnesses until we were after those primaries and I made it very well known to the judge who's over this as well as my team that I would not do anything until after the election. Um, so they'll have to accuse me of something else. They can get rid of that one. This is your fourth or fifth RICO, I guess, uh, in, in, since you've been the DA. Just talk about the strength of what the, uh, of this tactic and, and you know why why you go this way. Um, well, I have to go back to the great work of Detective Needham and Detective Davidson in this matter. Uh, I'm a fan of RICO. I've told people that. And the reason that I am a fan of RICO is I think jurors are very, very intelligent. I think that they once, you know, some people don't want to do jury service, but once they get there, we really find that there are good citizens there. They're very smart. They pay attention. They take these matters serious. But they want to know the whole story. They want to know what happened. They want to make an accurate decision about someone's life. And so RICO is a tool that allows a prosecutor's office and law enforcement to tell the whole story. And so we use it as a tool so that they can have all the information they need to make a wise decision. So it's a tool I continue to use. Um, I'm very happy the Atlanta Police Department allow us to come down and do gang training and talk about RICO. And th that was the great cooperation of the Atlanta Police Chief that stands behind me, Sheerbaum, as well as the mayor allowing that. And so it's a tool we'll use. Sandy Springs has bought in. And Atlanta has brought in, in fact, all of the chiefs. We know that this is a good tool, and it's a tool we continue to use. Since, since there are so many agencies, is this investigation going to expand to other counties and trade information uh, on this? We will actually absolutely be cooperative with other counties, but I am the district attorney only of Fulton County, and so what I am concerned about is crime that occurs in Fulton County. Yeah, and, do you think we've seen a lot of delays um, in people not wanting to testify? And even some people who originally were willing to testify now filing to delay. Do you think this is part of, of a general tactic to push it as far past 
the election is possible by certain people? You're an excellent reporter, but with that, I'm going to end this uh, press conference. Thank y'all for coming. Uh, uh, uh.